computers and technology. And as you guys can see, I finally found another garage sale find. This is the Compact Notebook 100 laptop computer. Um, and it actually took a, uh, a lot of work to get this back up and running because when I bought this, unfortunately, I picked up the wrong power supply. This guy had a whole box of them. I went through and just found the lead that fit into the back of the PC and just assumed that that was the correct power supply. Now that was a 10 volt power supply at like 0.9 amps. Um, so we're not even getting 15 watts out of that. So there was no way uh, that was gonna power up this laptop. I plugged it in and tried and I thought the laptop was dead at first, but then I realized um, that power supply just couldn't give this thing enough power. So what this is over here, and I was teasing uh, you guys earlier with this. I'm not sure if you saw it in my last video, but this was in there for a split second. And I actually put it in the comment section and asked if uh, anyone saw it and I don't think anyone did. Uh, but this came in the other day. This is a uh, variable voltage DC power supply and this is going to give us the 18 volts at uh, up to 3 amps that this laptop needs to, uh, to function. Now that being said, I have been testing this laptop out for the past couple of hours and it really doesn't consume over 2.2 amps at 18 volts. Um, that's really where it stops as far as power consumption goes. So not a very power hungry laptop. It actually is missing some parts, so it should be consuming a little bit more power. The hard drive has been taken out of this and you can tell because a lot of the screws are missing on the back and I'll show you that in just a minute. Someone went through this and pulled the hard drive out and then just didn't put it back together properly. Uh, and I think they might've also screwed up the hinges pretty badly on this uh, little laptop. So of course, I'm going to take you guys all around the laptop in just a second. I'm going to boot it up into a live operating system. Got plop in here. Got a flash drive in the back. It actually took quite a long time to find an operating system that would work with this PC. Initially, I tried Windows, but for some reason, Windows was not working on this machine. So I might have a separate video with Windows running on this. Uh, but I'm going to boot it up into Puppy Linux, which usually always works. And I tried DSL and it didn't work, which was weird. Um, but we're going to go ahead and boot this up using Puppy Linux. Of course, I have to tell you guys the story of how I acquired this PC. Now, I was out just driving around looking for garage sales. I followed the signs and it took me to some storage units and they were having a storage unit sale. Uh, I looked around, didn't really see anything. It was all old antiques. I mean, it was still pretty interesting, uh, but nothing up my alley. So I asked the guy if he had any old computers. He said no. He asked his buddy. Um, his buddy said he had a couple old laptops. So I went ahead and followed him back to his storage unit. Um, and once again, his was full of all these old antiques and everything. Really cool. But he had a whole stack of old laptops. And a lot of them were from the mid-2000s. The oldest thing he had uh, was this Compact Notebook 100, which is why I went ahead and snatched it up. Because it looked interesting. Uh, and I thought, hey, you know, I'll just mess around with that. Now you guys know that I really, really hate paying over $5 for any machine. So the first instinct was to start lower than five bucks. I went up to him and asked him, well, could you do three for this? And he comes back to me and he's like, yeah, I could do 30 for this. I'm like, what? wait, did you say 30? He's like, yeah. I'm like, no, I said three. He's like, oh, I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I never usually pay over $5 for any of these computers. And he's like, oh. You know what, so, you know, he had that dumbfounded look on his face and I had to, I had to bump the offer up a little bit. So I went ahead and offered him five and he just handed it over. Um, so I, I felt kind of bad after that because I think that guy expected me to pay a little bit more. Uh, but once again, I don't feel comfortable paying uh, over five bucks or anything. I tried doing a little bit of research on this computer and it was kind of hard to find what I wanted. And as you all know, Compact no longer exists, unfortunately. So that made things even harder. Um, from what I can tell, this thing was manufactured in the early 2000s, probably around 2002, because this thing is rocking an AMD K6 running at 425 megahertz and it is packed with 128 megabytes of RAM. Now, of course, I'm going to go into the BIOS and verify all those facts because they might be wrong off the top of my head. But first, let's go ahead and take a look around the system. This laptop is in pretty good cosmetic condition. As you can see right off the bat, you can see some scratches on the front of the case. Not really a big deal. Uh, the biggest thing that I've seen wrong with this laptop is the fact that the screen bezel starts to break apart when you open it up where the hinges are. I'm not sure if the previous owner caused that by taking the laptop apart and then not reassembling it properly, or it's just something that has come with uh, uh, wear and tear and time, of course. And then also all the screws are not in on the bottom of the laptop because the previous owner did not replace them all. Uh, he must have lost some of them when he was working on it and uh, oh, I just realized I had my flash drive in there and I hope I didn't, are you serious? Oh no, that's a fail, wow. 
And that was a nice on-camera fail. I completely crushed that flash drive. It's not really a big deal because I picked this up for free, so I'm not too worried about it. We might have to uh, reinstall an image of uh, Puppy Linux onto a different flash drive. It might not work anymore, but the USB port is uh, actually fine. So pretty strong USB port there. Crushed my flash drive. But anyway, let's go ahead and start out with the front of this computer. As you can see, there's nothing much on the front. You can see the 2.5 inch floppy drive, which actually has a plop already in there. So we're ready to boot from our USB flash drive. If it still works, if not, we're gonna have to uh, uh, put that image onto a different flash drive. And you can also see the latch to open up the screen. I'm not gonna open it up right now. That's coming in just a second. We're gonna move over to the right side of the computer. You can see a CD-ROM drive. Volume adjustment is right here. And it looks like there's a little, uh, ah, little window right here for a infrared sensor. Looking at the back of the PC, you can see our audio inputs and outputs, a very strong USB port, uh, parallel port for printing, that's a serial port right there, outtake vent for the CPU fan, VGA, uh, PS2, and then the line for the power in. Side of this laptop, you can see a lock slot, power button, modem, uh, looks like some sort of card slots. It's probably PCMCIA, um, and then the release latch for the battery. At the top of the laptop, you can see the compact logo and some indication lights right here. Now I'm going to show you guys how painful it is to open this thing. This hinge is starting to go bad. This one isn't too bad yet. Um, and as I said earlier, the uh, screen bezel will actually start to break apart as we try to open it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the screen up. And let me see if I can capture the bezel breaking apart on camera. Not too bad on this side. Let me move over to this side. Yeah, you can see just right there. Uh, part of the bezel is actually starting to uh, separate. So that's definitely an issue. And if you couldn't tell, a uh, little piece broke off right here right as I took it home and I had to super glue that uh, back on uh, right when I got home because you know it's kind of weird just not having a piece there. But let's go ahead and take a look at all of our goodies right here. You can see the trackpad actually is in a pretty good condition Despite the fact that the trackpad is in really good condition, these buttons below it feel horrible. I'm not sure if the previous owner didn't put it back together properly, but they're, you know, I, I get no feedback from them. It just feels awful. Um, the keyboard's in pretty good condition. You don't see any worn keys or that uh, awful glossy look coming from it. So all the keys feel fine. It has a really nice response. Um, I wish I could say the same about these buttons. You can see some more indication lights right here. Uh, there's a grill right here for the speaker. Uh, more indication lights right here. This port right here is actually for the microphone. You can see compact notebook 100 printed right here. And then the monitor itself is in good condition as well. And you can take a better look at that when we actually start putting images up on it. Um, so I'm about to turn this thing on. I wanna flip it over first and show you guys a couple of the components inside. I wanna take out the battery because interestingly enough, check this out. All right, so it's not plugged in or anything. Uh, this laptop is over 10 years old. I'm not sure if the previous owner had a battery replacement or not, but the battery in this thing is actually still good. Okay, so the battery is a compact 10.8 volt, 3.8 amp, our nickel metal hydride battery and I'm trying to figure out if this thing is the original battery that came with the laptop I'm looking for some sort of number that would date it um, and the only thing I can really find uh, that sort of resembles that is um, 02 so maybe that's 2002 um, if anyone actually knows go ahead and post a comment in the comment section I went ahead and loosened these screws on both of these panels. You can see where the previous owner lost the screws because they are no longer here. Let's go ahead and take off the larger one first. What is under here? No, nope. did I loosen it enough? Maybe not. That one's not all the way out yet. Just give it a couple more rotations and here we go. Um, and that's kind of anticlimactic. I expected the RAM to be under here as well, but it is not. It's just a big heatsink for that AMD K6-2 CPU. Um, under this one, let's see what we find. Come on. Woo! Maybe I should have been a little bit more delicate with that approach, but it's actually held in by um, some clips, it feels like. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this up and out. There we go. And... 
What in the world? Oh, you know what? That's actually uh, that's actually part of the modem. So that gives us access to the modem. Oh gosh, where would you find the RAM? I guess in order to uh, gain access to the RAM, you'd have to take the entire laptop apart, which I am not going to do right now. Before I turn this thing on and boot up into the BIOS, let me go ahead and show you what's going on over here. So I have the power supply hooked up right now. I'm actually going to make a separate video on this next. Um, so if you're interested in this, you can go ahead and check out the next video coming up. But I have these leads running out of it and it's hooked up to this little connector that I chopped off of that 10 volt power supply. And as I said earlier, this connector fits the laptop. But before I hooked it up, I went ahead, grabbed the multimeter and probed uh, both sections of this connector to see what the polarity is. The inside is positive and the outside is negative. Uh, and of course, I hooked it up and checked to make sure the polarity was right before I plugged it back into the laptop because that would have been horrible um, if I had the polarities reversed. Here we go. Let's get this thing up and running. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the power supply on, have it set to 18.2 volts, which is the uh, highest it will go. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. Ah, this is hard to do with uh, one hand. <laughs> I should have grabbed the tripod before I started this and make sure that the charging indicator light comes on. So there we go. The light is on. Obviously, it is plugged in properly. I'm going to pop open the uh, monitor and turn this thing on. Let's go ahead and go into the BIOS. Okay, so I had to put the camera down for just a second because I could not get into the BIOS and I figured out why because I was pressing the wrong button. I was going for uh, either escape, F2, or delete, which is what it is usually. Um, but for this system, it's F10, which is uh, really weird. Uh, but we are in the BIOS now. You can see our CPU clock is at 475 megahertz. As I said earlier, that is an AMD K6. We have 128 megabytes of memory. Uh, and this BIOS doesn't really give us uh, too much detail, which is kind of annoying. I already went through everything and I couldn't really find any more information. So kind of a stripped down BIOS, but let's go ahead and exit out of this. I have to uh, put plop and everything back in because I thought that might be causing some issues with getting into the BIOS. Huh, look at this. I plugged in a PS2 mouse while I still had the BIOS up and you can actually navigate the BIOS using a mouse. So I thought that was uh, kind of interesting. Everything is set up and we are ready to boot into Puppy Linux. I'm still using that crippled flash drive, so we'll see if that thing still works. I had to hook up a mouse, as I said earlier, um, because the trackpad is not detected by Puppy Linux for some reason, and neither are the mouse buttons beneath it, um, which isn't really a big deal because I didn't want to use them anyway. And uh, if you couldn't hear it on camera, the CPU fan actually just started to spin up. I'm going to go ahead and save and reboot. And you can see I'm still navigating around with the mouse. Let's try to boot into Puppy Linux, but I have to go into the plot interface first. And I think Puppy Linux just froze. Don't worry guys, I'm going to go ahead and restart this. I'm pretty sure this is just an anomaly because I've already booted up into Puppy Linux and used the environment. But I'm going to go ahead and use this time to touch on a couple things I forgot to touch on earlier in the video. First off, we're going to be running Puppy Linux 4.3 point run on this PC. Um, this display is a 12.1 inch color display. Uh, max resolution is 800 by 600. The GPU in the system is a Trident CB17 uh, with eight megabytes of VRAM behind it. And then originally this computer would have had a five gigabyte hard drive in it. But as I said, the previous owner has removed that and the system would have originally shipped with Windows 98. But I think uh, you could have used this all the way up to XP. I doubt this would have worked with Vista. Uh, and once again, I'm gonna try to get a video out where this is uh, actually running Windows. I might try to throw an old hard drive in here and see if I can't get it to boot into 98 or XP. You know what? I think I did kill the flash drive because I went ahead, grabbed another flash drive and put Puppy Linux on it, popped it in, and it seems to be booting up just fine now. So. Eh, this one's dead. 
And did I mention that we are using USB 1.1 to boot into Puppy Linux? So the boot time is probably going to be pretty slow on this thing. And while Puppy Linux was loading, I decided to go ahead and take a look at the flash drive. The damage doesn't seem too bad um, since I bent the uh, connection right here. And you can see that the chip is right on the edge there. I think it popped off some of the uh, solder joints. So if I just took a, a soldering iron and uh, refloat that, I think it would work just fine. So I'm going to save this and maybe it'll be a uh, rainy day project. All right, so here we are finally at the desktop. It took quite a long time to boot from that USB 1.1 port, but anyway, we are here and we can start messing around with some programs on Puppy Linux. But before that, check out the power consumption of this thing sitting at idle. We're using about 600 milliamps at 18 volts, and that should be around 10 watts. Um, let's see, so 18 times 0.6 gives us approximately 10.8 watts of power consumption. So not bad at all. Let's go ahead and start messing around with some programs. You got to be kidding me. Ah, oh, I need to turn this feature off in the BIOS. It has this power saving feature where after, I think it's probably like two minutes, it shuts the monitor off and that's through the BIOS. That's actually uh, the system itself, not the operating system. Um, so that's not uh, agreeing to well with the operating system and when it shuts the monitor off, I cannot get to turn the monitor back on. So I'm gonna have to disable that in the BIOS so it stops doing that. To save myself some trouble, I'm just going to completely disable power saving mode. And it appears that that power saving feature in the BIOS might have actually been helping after all because we are now sitting idle on the desktop and we are using slightly more power than before. Now we're drawing about an extra 150 milliamps from the power supply. I finally have the system properly booted up. Let's go ahead and start playing around with some programs on Puppy Linux. I want to start out with something simple. Let's start out with Paint. I'm just going to single click on it. Once again, we are running off that uh, USB 1.1 port, so load times are going to be a bit slow. I'm going to drag this toolbar over here. That's nice and smooth. No issues with that. And let's just try making some shapes. Uh, how about a red box? Sounds good. All right. And it's been a while since uh, I've used this paint application in particular. And as you can see, I'm trying to figure out, uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> figure out how in the world I'm supposed to use this. Woo! But as you can see, that's working just fine. Let's exit out of this. Can't, uh, loose changes, I don't care. Let's open up the equivalent of Excel on here. Calc. Once again, those are uh, slightly slow load times due to the USB port, but it does open. Let's just try jotting in a formula down here. So how about um, equals 40 times five, enter. Okay, and why don't I just, uh, why don't I drag that around? What does that look like? Okay, not bad. Excel, well, the equivalent to Excel is working well as well. So I'm going to close out of this. No, of course, we don't want to save. Um, and let's go ahead and try to get some entertainment here because I'm actually pretty bored uh, trying to get this system to boot up finally. So uh, let's do something fun. I'm going to move over to uh, the section actually called fun. I thought it was called games, but fun and click pick out a game. And I think I've used this game before in one of my previous videos. I think it was uh, with a machine that was using an AMD K6, the uh, Toshiba Satellite CDS. Uh, I think it was the 1650. Anyway, uh, do I remember how to play this? Not really. Don't judge me. I'm just going to play this for a couple seconds. And, uh, God, we're probably getting uh, uh, a full 30 FPS right there. Not complaining about the uh, graphical capabilities of this PC at all, yet, anyway. Alright, and I 
don't want to stay on this too long because then of course you guys are going to get bored and I'm probably going to get bored eventually too. Um, even though this, I have to admit, this is pretty fun. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Let's see how long that battery will last. And uh, Puppy Linux actually has a nice little battery indicator right here. So I'm just going to shut off the power supply. Give it a break there. And we're going to run off the battery for a little bit. I went into system information to see if I could find any additional information on this system and uh, I didn't really find anything else. I've pretty much stated everything already that's uh, listed here. But if we scroll down, um, I forgot that this, uh, this does come equipped with some CPU benchmarks. So I'm just going to run one of them real quick because I'm kind of curious. Let's just run the CPU Blowfish benchmark. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and turn the power supply back on. Because that's probably going to drain the battery really quick. Alright, here we go. We are back on that power supply. Let's go ahead and run that Blowfish benchmark. The benchmark is finished and during that I was actually afraid that this uh, PC was going to max out the power supply's rating because it got to 2.5 amps and that's because we were charging the battery and running that benchmark at the same time so using quite a bit of juice there uh, but you can see that this computer scored a 78.44 below that we have a PowerPC processor 740 uh, running at 280 megahertz and then above that it, it gives you an Intel Solaron M processor running at 1. 5 gigahertz just to give you a better un understanding of where your uh, CPU actually is. I kind of wish they listed a couple more on here, I mean, but that's fine um, just for this little test. Let's close out of this and I want to try some multitasking now. So let's go ahead and open up a couple applications. First, I didn't open up a uh, word processor yet, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's pop open a by word processor. And I'm going to power the power supply back off and run this off the battery. All right, we are back on battery power. And here we go. Let's just test out how well A by Word is functioning and the phrase that you all love, hello. YouTube. If you guys want me to uh, use a different phrase in these videos when I'm testing out the word processors on these PCs, uh, please leave it in the comment section because I'm kind of getting bored of this. And we'll just, um, how about we make it just a bit bigger and bold. And a by word processor is working just fine. Now let's minimize it and leave it open. And let's go ahead and pop open the web browser. Now I don't have my uh, Wi-Fi dongle plugged in. I ran into some issues with that and just couldn't use it with this computer. Um, so we're not going to be able to browse the internet just yet. As I said earlier, it might come up in a uh, different video when we install Windows. So uh, that might be coming your way soon. But is it going to open alongside the word processor? And I did click on it just now, so it should be uh, coming up here soon. Yeah, I see the uh, the light on the flash drive is flashing, so it's trying to load up something. All right, and here we go. That's just this is just the uh, home page for pretty much every version of uh, Puppy Linux. Just an info page, so we're gonna minimize that. Sorry about that, had to pop in a fresh battery because the one I was using just died. But let's go ahead and get back to where we were. I currently have A by Word and the web browser open. Uh, and we still have 50 megabytes of memory free. So uh, pretty good on the resource management here. What else can we do? Why don't I go ahead and try to navigate the file system? And let's just go to something that's going to have a lot of files in it. What about this one? No? Um, God. How does the, uh, where's all the stuff stored for the... Here we go. There we go. That's more like it. So I'm just going to scroll through here. Not bad. And that is nice and smooth. Going to minimize that. 
And let's try having uh, multiple workspaces open at the same time. Uh, what does it look like to swap between those? Let me just open something in this uh, workspace so there's actually you know something here to look at. I'm gonna pop open an instance of calc. And I feel like the system is starting to get a bit slower, um, but I'm gonna pop this open. So we have an instance of calc right here and let's just try switching in between the two workspaces. So that's the workspace with uh, the three applications open. This is a workspace with just calc open. Uh, not bad at all, pretty responsive. Although I do feel like it might be starting to slow down right now. Okay, so that's going to be about it for this installment of AA Computers and Technology. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this purchase. I would have been even happier if I uh, had only paid three bucks for it, but it is what it is. And I think I'm going to make a couple more videos on this computer. One will install Linux, or not Linux, one will install Windows. Uh, two, I might completely tear this down and try to rebuild it, repair that hinge, uh, get this bezel to stay together, and then of course we'll uh, take a deeper look of what's actually inside here. Um, so expect that to come up in the next couple months when I get around to it, probably during winter break. I'm going to pop the uh, power supply back on just so I don't drain the battery all away. But if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or you saw an error in this video, please leave a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And of course, please do not forget to like this video. I will see you guys in the next installment of A Computers and Technology, where I will be going over uh, this little power supply.